I never imagined that I would be living in this home. And I never imagined that I would marry the 63rd first African-American governor of the state of Maryland. This is the first time since 1870 when governors in the state and their families moved into the home that a black first family has lived here. What does that mean to you? Oh, it, it is a privilege. I remember when uh, Wes and I came with our children, me and James, and the Hogans welcomed us to give us a tour around the house, and our kids were so excited. And I remember them running up the stairs and picking rooms, and it is really just something that is, you can't, almost express the feelings that you have from that. Such a, a, a beautiful opportunity to be able to share the, the space in the people's house of Maryland and to be able to create a home that shows the how diverse Maryland is and to be able to welcome people into this space. I know that the First Ladies like to put their own personal touches on the house. Moving more portraits in here. The artist Simi Knox, he did the Frederick Douglass uh, uh, a piece that hangs now has been moved to the entry of the house, the entryway of the house, because the governor and I wanted everybody who walked into this house to never miss that portrait. It was we sitting in uh, what it's called the conservatory, but we also call it the Tubman Room because we have a bust of Harriet Tubman here. Along with a new title, along with a new abode, also comes a bigger platform. And so have you had time to think about some of the issues that you want to take on firsthand? So I was diagnosed with uh, MS uh, in, my, in my late 20s. My first symptom was I lost taste in my mouth and then I had the double vision, and then my gait was off. This is something that women of color, particularly black women, were misdiagnosed for a very long time. Just because I didn't have residual effects doesn't mean I don't worry about it. So with MS, you know, people are waiting for the other shoe to drop. But to be able to talk about it, to be able to speak to people freely, makes you understand that you're not alone, and I thought, no, it's time for me to be public about it because if I can help somebody along the way, I want to be able to do that. Anything that we don't know about you, like any hidden <laughs> talents oh, or anything listen, fun. Listen, listen, yes. I, I, I will tell you, at the beginning of COVID, I needed an outlet as many of us did and I started playing tennis. I think I got pretty good at it. I don't take it for granted to be able to move the way that I can and mm -hmm. so I try to stay active in that. How about your husband? Tell me something that we haven't seen on the campaign trail oh. that has not been printed. I want the tea. You I want, want to know tea. something that we don't know I about him it. that he... Well, listen, I think some people know, but I'm going to say it again. He is an amazing singer. My husband has a beautiful voice. You got any videos? Won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? Because all I ever had or a redemption song. What are you doing? <laughs> he was just uh, in our house over at Fox 5. I am not leaving <laughs> next year. I, I Listen, I, the, the president's gonna run and I'm gonna support, uh, and I'm gonna support his re-election campaign. I have to ask you, what if the president doesn't <laughs> run again? Well, listen, I think my husband is absolutely right. He didn't apply for this job to go to the next job. What he wanted to do was take his public service to the next level and he's so honored to have this opportunity. So the future holds what it holds, right? But he's gonna finish the job here, and that I know.